Good morning, dear participants of summer school. Uh, this part of presentation is pre-recorded, so my video is not included, and you could focus on the presentation. As Miroslav already mentioned, the title, the title of uh, our presentation in Tourism Accessibility 4.0, a transition of e-accessibility in tourism toward a more inclusive future, and the big part of my presentation will be on a subtopic called Keep Calm and Travel On. And what does it mean? Uh, you will uh, soon hear. So, first of all, I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Uglia Shostankov, uh, but everybody calls me Ugi. I'm a full professor at the Faculty of Sciences, University of Novi Sad, Department of Geography, Tourism and Hotel Management. My main research areas are strategic role of information technology in tourist experiences and spatial information systems in environmental studies and business. But my main focus uh, in recent year, years in, is on calm technology and digital well-being, uh, mostly based on mindfulness within tourism and hospitality industry. So. Now we will talk about e-accessibility uh, from tourism perspective. As you already know, tourists represent one of the most diverse uh, types of consumers, including a large group of people with disabilities. And many of them frequently face physical, sensory, cognitive or even cultural barriers in service provision and delivery. And these barriers uh, may occur in any of the typical tourist experience phases, for example, information seeking, trip planning, booking, uh, experiencing of destination, and later after trip sharing about your travel and so on. And they are not; uh, these barriers are not limited to any specific type of travel, for example, business or leisure travel, or any tourism settings. On the other hand, tourism as a technology-dependent industry relies heavily on information technology, and that trend has even been more pronounced uh, with uh, the recent use of tourism for zero technologies and approaches such as Internet of Things, Big Data Analytics, Artificial Intelligence, Blockchain, uh, Location-based services or Virtual uh, and Augmented Reality Systems. And this could potentially further, even further hamper uh, the co-creation of tourist experiences for people with disabilities, but also for other people. Despite Tourism uh, 4.0 aiming to provide more sophisticated electronic accessibility, such as e-accessibility. At the same time, Tourism 4.0 technology have the innate qualities to mitigate many accessibility issues and turn them into possibilities by relying on tourists bringing their own devices and by promoting advanced approaches in system design and use. In other words, uh, emerging intelligent environments, for example, brought by Tourism 4.0 are considered to offer significant opportunities to positively impact human life in general and to and in particular to provide useful means to support people in their daily life activities and travel also thus improving well-being for everybody especially for people with uh, limitation of activities for example and in this context uh, accessibility and usability although essential are not sufficient to ensure that application and services are appropriately designed to satisfy uh, to satisfy human needs in providing their well-being. So when we are designing tourism products, we should think uh, uh, further from just accessibility and usability of the systems. We should think about how it uh, impacts tourism experiences and how that tourism experience uh, is related to well-being of people with disabilities but also uh, tourists as well and as i already mentioned technology is a problem and 
also is a solution in this regard. So we, uh, in next couple of minutes I will talk about uh, technology uh, as, as Miroslav and I uh, mentioned here the good, the bad and the ugly of technology. Uh, because tourism industry practitioners should understand both positive but also the negative nature of information and communication technology used in uh, tourism settings. Today uh, Miroslav and I uh, will focus on the negative uh, effects of technology and we will offer approach to deal with the problems with so-called calm design. What is calm design? Calm design is a way of designing uh, information systems that suggest that technology should quietly remove the background of our lives and come into play with users, with us, when and if required, thus delivering and or enhancing an experience. We will talk about that uh, 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 a little bit more, but I would also uh, like to say a couple of, of um, issues that uh, tourism or, or e-tourism are dealing uh, with now. Uh, uh, in tourism domain uh, we are occupied with the smart tourism and the use of different kind of technologies uh, and uh, this type of uh, research currently dominates uh, with virtual uh, and augmented reality uh, that are uh, reshaping tourism industry, Internet of Things that dictate that tourism industry should evolve, evolve further and become capable of transforming large data sets uh, like big data into value proposition for tourists. Uh, the Web uh, 4.0 can bring about more intelligent uh, uh, agents and symbiotic interaction between humans tourists and machines and there are already examples uh, of robots and artificial intelligence being used in hotels to deal with consumers. However, uh, this increased ICT uptake creates sometimes the friction between tourists and tourist experiences and that friction manifests uh, 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 more frequently. Uh, and while some consumers value the pressure or satisfaction from exploring new technologies, they are also concerned about prolonged use. Indeed, uh, the increased ICT uptake can hamper the successful de delivery of tourist uh, uh, experiences. Uh, let, you, uh, let me give you one example. Uh, a voice recognition system in a busy airport can really frustrate frustrate the user or a mobile travel guide application an app can confuse a given that is uh, that is often packed with generic and often irrelevant information for the current situation and these types of issue we call the invisible problem uh, because within the digital led lives consumers are already crowded with multiple devices and services and uh, they face with the issues such as information overload, choice overload, dehumanization of experiences and as a consequence there is techno stress, value co-destruction and so on. And if you add to this, for example, gaming addiction, especially for young, younger generation, is even officially recognized as a mental health disorder by World Health Organization. And this issue of ICT overuse during vacation that should be re regenerative and should be relaxing is also recognized in tourism studies where there are more and more evidence than, that uh, ICT can consume too much of attention, thus jeopardizing the enjoyment of leisure vacation experience for some uh, consumers. And in particular, smart, smartphones are the one to blame the most. They are becoming a key medium uh, for information delivery and exchange. 
and in essence the digital distraction can influence the quality and scope of tourist consumption of sights and sounds for example it can uh, uh, limit social interactions experiences of others and ultimately the tourist well-being or more specifically they can hamper our digital well-being and these shortcomings uh, have so far been mostly set aside in ICT develop development uh, because they all uh, rush in the short-term profits and also they uh, 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 rush to, to achieve a novelty effect of technology use in tourism that is often reflected in the increased profit. So, after all these uh, things being said, uh, we are now in the phase of recognizing the problem where technology company recognize that we as consumers are overwhelmed. So for example, Android operative system is now equipped with capabilities to help us to achieve the balance within technology use called uh, or branded like digital well-being and the rise of awareness of the problem of addictive technology is promoted by some movements such, such as National Day of Unplugging, the time well spent movement that promoted the, the idea that technology distorts people's common reality, constantly shedding uh, uh, our attention or causing us to feel isolated. So, I mentioned a couple of times digital well-being. So what is digital well-being? It, 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 it is a very a broad concept uh, or framework that uh, looks after people, uh, after personal health, safety, relationship and work-life balance in digital setting. It also enables uh, us to act safely and responsibly in digital environments and also it manages digital stress, workload and distractions. In other words, it balances digital with real-world interactions. And similar to traditional understanding of subjective well-being, digital well-being cannot be created just relying on individual capabilities as other factors such as external environment also play a role. For example, the society have the power to, uh, power to uh, uh, affect the level of digital consumption. This is especially uh, uh, important for young, young, younger generation where uh, they are influenced by their uh, friends and, and uh, other people in their uh, immediate surroundings. And this includes uh, also various providers of ICT solutions and services who are entitled to support the co-creation of digital well-being together with consumers. As I already mentioned, a good example of, of Google that introduces the concept of digital being into uh, Android operative systems. And after talking about all these problems, we, will, uh, we would like to talk about some kind of solution that we call a calm solution. And we said that paradoxically a solution to technology overload may rest within the technology itself. And the idea relies uh, on the concept of calm technology in which technology to the background of our lives implying that it has no purpose on its own, but should serve in delivering desired experience instead. And this concept is created by uh, uh, these two guys, Mark Weiser and John Silly Brown. Uh, they divide the technology in, technologies into pleasant and calm and disturbing ones. The, the, the distinction was made on the grounds of how technologies engage with user central and peripheral attention. For example, when you are driving a car, your central attention is on the road, while peripheral attention is attuned with the engine noise. 
peripheral attention can suddenly become central. For example, a sudden change in the engine noise should draw driver's attention back and prompt them to stop uh, and check the engine. And what is fundamentally incalming in this process is this smooth transition from peripheral to central attention and backwards. And one of the the, the second uh, example of uh, calm approach is that calm technology brings uh, a more detail into the edge of an interface, as most of the in information does not require your full attention while you are driving a car. For example, the engine light informing you about the engine problem will turn on only when it is relevant. It doesn't bleep, uh, it doesn't uh, 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 produce a sound or, 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 or a visual notification uh, when it is not needed. And uh, we also should uh, make a distinction between calm and calming technologies. Calm, and te calm technology, as I said, is an attention and focus-based approach to designing tools that can be more easily used in a calm manner. On the other hand, calming technologies are system, systems designed to actively calm people and thus increase their user capacities. For example, heart rate tracking application, uh, for example, uh, fitness trackers, uh, represent a good example of calming technologies. And uh, this calm technology approach is gaining more and more attention uh, with the, uh, the increased uh, ICT uptake in, in everyday life. And this uh, fantastic uh, 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 researcher, Amber Case, uh, recently wrote a book, a Calm Technology Principles and Patterns for Non-Intrusive Design. And she beautifully uh, 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 distinguished uh, characteristics of Calm Technology into three main groups. Uh, she said, uh, she says that uh, Calm technology should be elegant, should be humane, and should be unobtrusive. And I will uh, present you uh, several characteristics of calm technology that she uh, uh, mentioned in her book. So the first one is technology should require the smallest possible amount of attention. And the attention overload is the strongest argument for making technology calm. The more things you have to pay attention to, the less mental space you have available for actual uh, 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 getting things done. For example, when you're using a copy machine, you don't need all these buttons presented in, in, in the picture. You just need one button to press for example, a co copy uh, a page or, or something, something like that. The second one, technology should inform and create calm. And this calm comes from knowing that you will be alerted at the appropriate time and if something needs to be address addressed. For example, a beautiful example is a, a, a simple teapot or a kettle. You pour a water in a kettle, you walk away from the kettle, you totally forget about the kettle, and when the water is ready, you will hear a sound and you will uh, 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 bring your attention to a kettle and make, you, make yourself a, a good tea, tea or coffee. Third, technology should make use the periphery, the periphery of our attention. For, for understanding this characteristic of calm technology, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, attention model. So how can we uh, uh, distinguish our three types of attention? We usually have our primary attention, which is visual and direct. And this is attention, for example, you might, might pay to your desktop computer. Then we have secondary attention, 
that is more distant. For example, some audio signals or vibration that do not need to be addressed directly focused on in order to be felt. And then we have also a tertiary attention then that consists of peripheral attention such as distant sounds, lights or environment and environmental vibration. So if we put uh, this attention model into an example when we are using a headphones our primary, our visual attention, if we have it, it is unused. Our secondary attention our, is occupied with the headphones, of course, and tertiary attention of distant sounds in, is unused. If you use smartphone, for, for example, with touch screen, our primary attention, visual, is, is, is on the screen and touch navigation. Our secondary attention is diminished. And also our tertiary uh, uh, attention is diminished or blocked. And finally, when we are driving a car, all three types of our attention is occupied. And you will understand why it is so dangerous to drive and text or to drive and to speak uh, 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 on a phone and, and so on. For example, our primary attention is on the front window and on the vehicle in space, moving in a space. Secondary attention is on the mirrors, on brake, on pedal and so on. And tertiary attention could be uh, 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 focused on radio buttons, or conversation with other people in the vehicle. So, so you will see how our attention is used, for example, when, you, when we are using headphones and when we are uh, driving a car. Fourth, technology should amplify the best of technology that uh, technology could offer and the best of humanity. And we have uh, he, here a very catchy slogan, uh, design for people first or make humans great again. Maybe not so good slogan, but uh, you, you get the point. Uh, the best interfaces do not connect us to technology. They connect us to other people. So what do we mean when we say best of technology and best of huma humanity? Google is the best not because it provides all the answers but because it connects us to other, others as they know and have the answers. Fifth, technology can communicate but it does not need to speak in most of cases. Talking to voice assistants still may feel intrusive unwelcome and awkward for most of the people. When you hear from Siri or Google Assistant or Cortana or Alexa, when they, uh, uh, it, uh, she, he uh, uh, responds to you and you hear, I'm sorry, I don't understand. You think, is it my fault? Is it, it's, it feels like you haven't done your homework, so it can be awkward, especially when you are lonely or you are in distress. So uh, many of uh, communication can be done without technology trying to imitate human, human uh, 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 beings. And technology should uh, work even when it fails. What does it mean? Uh, it means that, for example, if you are providing a, a, a service uh, in a tourist destination, you should always provide a human backup whenever it's possible. When you have self-check-in uh, machine at the airport, every good uh, airline company ha has uh, um, have a human backup uh, in in a nearby to help you if if you cannot manage the the the, the uh, transaction by your own. And seventh, 
The right amount of technology is the minimum needed to solve the problem. You should always remember when you are designing a system for tourists or for uh, uh, some other people that you shouldn't have to be a system administrator to live in your home or to work in your office or to uh, 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 deal with your hotel room unless you are an IT guy. <laughs> Let's be totally honest. A product that does uh, that uses uh, the right amount of technology usually becomes invisible. What does it mean? It means that you don't think about the Google when you are doing a, a, a search because all these complicated algorithms are hidden behind this beautiful and simplistic logo. You just have Google logo and you just have this uh, free space to, to write whatever you want and all complicated things are hidden be, 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 uh, behind this white page and technology should respect social norms some good technology failed due to privacy and social concerns for example google glasses uh, were awkward to wear and people were afraid that they would be recorded without their knowledge Although Google continued to offer glasses for business purpose only, it, 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 it didn't, uh, this product did not reach its full potential. And before we go to uh, some examples of, ICT, uh, of Calm ICT technology design in tourism, I would like to focus a little bit uh, on smartphones. And let's look at smartphone from a typical uh, point of view and from calm point of view. From typical viewpoint, smartphone usually require our full attention. It consume, consumes our free time and our beauty sleeps, let's be honest. It is too large for the pocket but still has small screen for productive work. It never has enough juice and roaming charges can be really problematic, especially for non-EU countries. From the other side, from a calm viewpoint, smartphone is easy to use because we are accustomed to this device. It's always present, it is always on, it helps us in navigation, especially when we are traveling. It has awareness on its own based on sensors and also it can uh, usually uh, automatically communicate with other machines so we don't have to and uh, younger generations cannot imagine their life without smartphones so in essence every technology especially uh, technologies that uh, we use on a daily basis has uh, have uh, both positive and negative sides or they can be considered calm or or disturbing and let's now review some interesting examples of services and technologies that could be classified as calm uh, in some part of their uh, uh, of their use uh, let's first review roadside american app it's an application that knows where you are on the road and where attractions are along the road. So it will give you uh, a relevant notification and a contextual push mobile notification only when it is relevant. So it works actually in the background during your travel experience. Now we have Smart More Foster, for example. Uh, smart portions are embedded with chips that uh, allow for transfer of data. Uh, they have small tags uh, that could uh, uh, um, transfer or launch uh, 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 on a task on your device. It's, it's, it, it is an example of hidden ICT and it provides uh, us with notification when we need it. Then we have radio fre frequency identification bracelets. Uh, 
for example, Tomorrowland Festival in Belgium act, uh, provide users uh, with uh, these kind of bracelets that act as tickets and credit cards. And interestingly, at the same time, bracelets allow people to connect on social media and uh, have embedded LED lights that can be remotely triggered by the festivals producing light shows. So why they are calm? Because they are uh, easy to use, they uh, virtually have no interface and they connect digital and virtual worlds. Then we have biometric security system. Uh, well, one uh, type of system will be introduced during uh, uh, Tokyo Olympic uh, this summer uh, and they will allow tourists to conduct credit card transactions using only their fingerprints and it is an example of paperless transaction or uh, frictionless shopping and this frictionless shopping maybe is not a good idea uh, and social media geotagging is a very useful option for some social media networks like Facebook and especially Twitter and from a user view viewpoint it is an easy to use and enjoyable way of identifying uh, uh, find locations while complex ICT support is completely submerged in the background and require no interactions. And there we have prototype of uh, airports virtual aquarium tunnel. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, in Dubai International Airport they will install uh, such uh, device uh, that will be shaped like a tunnel with 80 hidden cameras that uh, will scan faces of passengers as they walk through example of hidden technology and then we have this small but beautiful uh, uh, design uh, purpose is on-site evaluation it has minimal aesthetic combined with vibrant colors colors and usually people uh, love to interact with uh, this kind of devices as they, at, uh, and they increase the response rate when collecting reviews on site. Uh, it is easy to use, it has intuitive physical interface but also it, is conne it connects uh, a digital and physical worlds as uh, it directly uploads data to database. And my favorite uh, Calm Designs uh, smart home uh, a device called MUI. It's a type of um, smart speaker totally made from wood from the outside, but from the inside it is uh, equipped with uh, uh, advanced technology that provides the same capabilities uh, such as other uh, smartphone uh, speakers. And finally, uh, I just want to say that uh, we wanted to demonstrate a new viewpoint on every often neglected relationship between humans or tourists in this case and technologies. And let's be totally honest, travel uh, in digitally led people's lives cannot be totally calm. Indeed, uh, the initiative to engage with ICT is needed, but the level of this engagement uh, may vary among tourists. Uh, some of them will have more capabilities, some, uh, someone uh, will uh, have disabilities, but in essence um, we uh, should find the right place of ICT integration in tourism and in tourism experiences, uh, as it will be everlasting question, question in the tourism domain and fertile ground for further research. And if you are interested in the subject, uh, I could recommend you uh, some of the papers that we published recently. Uh, for example, Calm ICT Design in Hotels or Reviving Calm Technology in E-Tourism Context. And I'm sure Miroslav will uh, be very happy to provide you with some uh, uh, answers to your questions. And thank you for your attention.